Today on Treasure Hunting America, we'll visit with Randy Smith, a man who loves hunting for Civil War relics. Every officer with every regiment was, was mandated to turn in a report every week. Where is he? What's he doing? It's not that hard to find these places. Now it's still, you've got to get out there and, and cover some ground, but once you start hitting those bullets, you know you're in the area. Then we'll travel to Fresno, California, where Phil Foster and his five-year-old son hunt for treasure in the local reservoirs. My son got to an age where he actually understood that there's metal in the ground and this machine will tell you that there's metal right there. I think he's kind of hooked too. He'll ask me uh, if we can go out pretty regularly now. And finally, we'll join Richard Brooks of Portland, Oregon, who searches for jewelry and coins in the city's old time parks. And Laurelers Park is an old Portland park. It has been hunted quite a bit, but there's still things in the ground here that have never been found. All coming up on Treasure Hunting America. Hello and welcome to this episode of Treasure Hunting America. I'm your host, Mark Hendricks. Over the next half hour, we'll share some amazing stories of everyday treasure hunters across the country. Our first treasure hunter is Randy Smith. Randy's exposure to metal detecting began by learning from his father, whose best find was a loaded 18th century Spanish flintlock pistol. This made a huge impression on Randy in what treasure lies just under the ground waiting to be found. Actually, my dad started the hobby for our family back when I was like nine years old, and he really got addicted into it, and all of our, virtually all of our vacations were, had some metal detecting involved in uh, weekends and evenings and stuff, and so I started early. I was, like I said, nine years old, and just the things that he would find would be really interesting to me, and that just kept me, you know, going into it and, and staying involved with it, so it's, it's uh, been a lifelong hobby for me. It just kind of grew on me, you know, I started seeing some of the things he was finding and it was fascinating and interesting and stuff. So like father, like son, I wanted to get out there and do what he's doing. And uh, then I started finding things and it just kind of became an addic addiction from there. And uh, it's just something that I've, I, I've done always, it seems like. And you're out in the outdoors and uh, you're together. And, uh, you know, if, if you have a kind of a competitive relationship with somebody, well, then this is just like fishing or anything else. You want to try to outdo the next guy. So it, it just, it's real fun. Randy lives in Tulsa, Oklahoma, a great hunting ground for ghost towns, oil boom towns, and Civil War relics. Uh, Oklahoma area is a fantastic area for metal detecting. A lot of history, a lot of Indian history, uh, settlers. Uh, the oil boom created a lot of ghost towns that uh, you know went away you know, in later years. So it's a lot of opportunities for metal detecting, a lot of outlaw history where they were robbing trains and banks and, and burying the money. So it's just a great historical place to metal detect as most of the country is when you think about it. For Randy, his passion for metal detecting starts first with a love of history. Old houses like this one built in 1881 is an excellent place to metal detect. A few weeks ago, a friend of mine noticed some construction out here in front and metal detected. He found this old bust. Could be a top of a cane or a doll. We're not real sure what it is, but it's certainly an interesting item. So remember to keep your eyes open for places like this. It's an excellent place. And remember not to throw things away that you're not sure what they are. They could be valuable. I've always been interested in history. And this is basically, uh, you know, a, a, just a, a looking glass into history. Um, it's always fun for me to try to think of, well, this artifact, what is it, first of all? You know, what were the circumstances, why it's here? Who did it belong to? And it's just like a big riddle. This is a, uh, a really old park that I'm hunting and there's a lot of trash, a lot of trash in the ground. So I'm trying to pick out the, the good signals and they read higher on the screen that tells me that they're coins. And I'm gonna try to ignore a lot of the tin foil and, and bottle caps and pull tabs. And you, you know, you survey the area when you get started. You, you kind of look, well, you know, where did things happen out here 100 years ago? You know, you look at the size of the trees, 
you look at the rocks and you, you kind of visualize you know where the people congregated and that's where you want to concentrate. When we return, Randy will show some of his best Civil War finds and share about fellow treasure hunter Garth Brooks. Welcome back to Treasure Hunting America. With his residence in the Midwest, Randy Smith has wonderful opportunities to hunt for his favorite artifacts, Civil War relics. Some of my favorite metal detecting is the Civil War relic hunting. What I try to do there is find out the roads and the trails where the soldiers would move up and down and of course where the forts were. But in between these forts, you know, they would move back and forth between forts and about every 13 miles, which is about as far as they could go in a day, then they would have to camp. These places on these roads became regular campsites that they would use over and over and over. So they're just loaded with artifacts, loaded with history. And relic hunting is kind of a combination of, of uh, all types of hunting because you find all types of stuff. You find coins just like a coin hunter would. Then you find the military items. You find spoons and forks and just all kinds of things, uh, old bottles and, and stuff of that nature. So they're out, usually out in rural areas, which is real peaceful and, and nobody to bother you, you know, nobody looking over your shoulder. And, and it's just real enjoyable to spend a day out there in those kind of areas. This is some Civil War bullets that this the typical finds what you might find in an old Civil War campsite, uh, you know, the bullets and the buttons and things of that nature. So this is, this is just a variety of the different types of bullets that you might find. Uh, they're not real valuable, six, seven dollars a piece. There are some rare ones that can be worth, you know, hundreds of dollars, but typically this is the kind you find. This here is a uh, exploded Civil War cannonball, and uh, I found this at the Battle of um, Cabin Creek, which is also in Oklahoma. They actually had two battles uh, at this particular site. This particular piece is interesting because it still has the, uh, the fuse, which was set to a timer, and when they fired the cannonball, then it had so many seconds, and once the time ran out, then it would explode. And inside of this cannonball, it was hollow, and it had a whole bunch of smaller, um, round balls, so these had a what they call canister shot, so a bunch of these balls were inside the, can, the cannonball and it, it did a lot of damage. This here I just found uh, uh, just last month and it, it's a, a bayonet 